Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. The Incredible Story of Charlie Wiggins, the Negro Speed King. Gentlemen, start your engines! Before African Americans could race in the Indianapolis 500, there was the Colored Speedway Association, founded by prominent African-American businessmen and its golden glory sweepstakes. Indiana in the 1920s was the center of the automotive universe in the United States. Indiana was also the northernmost stronghold of the Ku Klux Klan. At one point, the Indiana Klan openly included the governor as well as the mayor of Indianapolis among its members. With a firm grip around the throat of the state's political structure, and fueled by KKK propaganda, segregationist attitudes were prevalent. Black drivers like Charlie Wiggins were barred from the Indianapolis 500 or any other event promoted by the 500 sanctioning body, the American Automobile Association. Though the AAA never announced a formal ban, whenever an African-American driver like Wiggins sought entry into an event, they were turned away. While the rules were unwritten, they were clearly understood. The Gold and Glory Sweepstakes was a big event that attracted the attention of national newspapers and newsreel agencies from coast to coast. At its peak, the Gold and Glory event attracted African-American crowds of up to 15,000 spectators dressed from head to toe in their Sunday best. The best Gold and Glory drivers among them was Charlie Wiggins. Wiggins was a race car driver and engineer who challenged the segregation in auto racing in the early 20th century. His legacy on the racetrack was secured by his success at the Colored Speedway Association's Golden Glory Sweepstakes race in Indianapolis, which he won four times between 1924 and 1936. Wiggins was born in Evansville, Indiana in 1897, an area where the Ku Klux Klan was deeply entrenched. As a young man, he shined shoes in front of an Evansville auto repair shop where he quickly learned to diagnose vehicle problems as customers drove into the lot. He was hired as a mechanics assistant, and when the U.S. draft for World War I opened, most of the shop's employees were called to war. As a result, Wiggins landed a job managing the shop floor. Around the same time, he married Roberta, a fashion model with a career on the rise. Together, they moved to Indianapolis for better opportunities. Wiggins found work at an auto body repair shop in downtown Indianapolis, which he later purchased. Wiggins' garage was a gathering spot for young men of all backgrounds who were fascinated by the speed of the modern automobile. His reputation was so strong that both black and white motorists brought their personal cars to him for service. In his spare time, Wiggins crafted his racing cars from junkyard parts at his garage with no sponsorship dollars whatsoever. His engineering skills were also well known to the AAA drivers of the time. A well-known IndyCar driver named Bill Cummings surreptitiously hired Wiggins in 1934 to tune his racing car for the Indianapolis 500 race by having Wiggins pose as his janitor to get around the Jim Crow laws. Wiggins swept floors during the day and worked on the car at night when nobody was around. Thanks to Wiggins' prodigious skills, Cummings won and set a track record. Although Wiggins was not allowed to stand in victory lane with his fellow crewmates after helping to engineer the winning car for the 1934 Indianapolis 500, his role was respected by the entire racing community. As Charlie Wiggins' shop and reputation were growing, the Indianapolis 500 was a new but instantly popular event. In 1920, Wiggins designed his own Wiggins special car with the hopes of participating in the Indy 500 that year. Wiggins' application was rejected because of the color of his skin. Wiggins, undeterred, joined the Colored Speedway Association for Black Race Car Drivers. The association was funded by William Rucker, a wealthy promoter with a passion for politics. The success of the Colored Speedway Association led to the birth of its own auto race. 
The 100-mile race included a grand prize of $2,500 and drew dozens of black drivers to compete. But only 20 would participate in each race. The first race occurred at the Indiana State Fairgrounds on July 4, 1924. The event attracted a sold-out crowd of 12,000 spectators and continued to grow in spectators every summer thereafter. These races were reported in black newspapers across the Midwest. One journalist from the Chicago Defender famously wrote about the racers saying that they were racing for the gold and the glory, which inspired the association to name the event the Gold and Glory Sweepstakes. The event ran from 1924 to 1936, and Wiggins was crowned champion four times, driving cars he built himself, often beating drivers in hand-me-down Indy cars. The Gold and Glory series survived for 12 years through a variety of ups and downs, his death blow came in 1936 when Wiggins lost his right leg and right eye in a horrific 13-car crash. With his biggest star gone and the Great Depression eroding fans' disposable income, the series died. Wiggins' last race was also the Colored Speedway Association's final event. Though his racing career was over, Wiggins continued, despite his injuries and pain, working at his garage and training young mechanics. In 1973, he finally saw one of his protégés, Sumner Red Oliver, become the first official African-American mechanic in Indy 500 history. In 1991, more than six decades after Charlie Wiggins attempted to enter the Indy 500 race, Willie T. Ribs would become the first black driver to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. Wiggins spent the rest of his life supporting and encouraging young black racers to compete at the highest level. Charlie Wiggins died in 1979. The nobility of Charlie Wiggins stood against the prejudice of his time and surroundings. Whether his victories were obvious or not, Wiggins was a lifelong champion. Until next time, if you like little-known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.